mentioned the Happy Show, but in fact, all seven Melbourne's children's programs were produced in this studio. Who would have thought that two grown men with painted faces and ice cream cones on their heads would become Melbourne icons? I'm referring, of course, to the legendary children's entertainers, Zig and Zag. That's, That's because we stayed together. Stayed together? And remained friends. You and me, can we be partners? You and me, can we be friends? We'll be a great association, one that never ends. I'll even do the laugh for you. Go. Warn me if he comes closer. Here we go. <laughs> Zig and Zag are undoubtedly the two most recognisable personalities to come out of HSV7 across six decades of television. Where is he? <laughs> you be the ham and I'll be the eggs. I'll be the coffee and you be the dregs. You be the arms and I'll be the legs of the greatest guy on earth. Here we go, Zag. You and us, can we be buddies? You and us, can we be friends? Next year, we're going this year, but only they ballsed up the tickets, so yeah. we're going next year. Uh huh. And I don't know what he does, he sits in his bum all day. <laughs> <laughs> Five! Oh, one, two, three, four, and you tag him. You like boys? No. You want to send him back? I have a yes. turn. Send him back. <laughs> oh, you do. You better go right back, uh -huh. then, Seven also led the way in adult comedy with sketch shows such as MacPhail and Gadsby. Hello, I'm David McPhail. And I'm John Gadsby. Or vice versa. And tonight on our show, we've got two very special Australian ladies, Linda George and Marsha Hines. recently with any uh, young spring cabbages? No. Brussels sprouts? No. Brock Oli? Certainly not. Well, that's your problem, mate. What? You're not getting your greens. <laughs> Another great sketch show came along which launched the careers of newcomers to the screen who went on to become the stars of Australian comedy. Steve Vizard, Marianne Fay, Ian McFadgen, Peter Moon, Glenn Robbins and Mark Mitchell. The show was the 11th hour. Oh, um, hello, my name's Kylie, and welcome to School News. Um, today at the milk bar, I was just standing there, and Amanda comes up, she's a little suck, she's a school molly, one hates her. And um, she goes, she goes, she goes, she goes, oh, hi, Kylie, really sarcastic. So I just go, oh, shut up, back to her. And um, anyway, she goes, she goes, she goes, um, oh, who's been passing on with Dino and that? And I go, I go, oh, Durs, if I would know. And um, she goes, she goes, oh, the whole school's talking about it. And then I, I went, I went, oh, who cares? And she went, oh, oh slack, oh, and I, went, I just went. What made it memorable was that the style of the presentation became the format for every other comedy show that followed. Welcome to Question Mark. This week, the question mark is hanging over a practitioner of alternative medicines from Melbourne. We ask quite simply, is he a naturopath or a psychopath? <laughs> Mr. Punjab, you've been accused of being a quack. What do you say to that? Oh, the people are always saying this quack, 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 quack. What does this mean? A duck god's quack. <laughs> With great pleasure that I introduce you to Uncle Arthur Robbins. <laughs> I 
So much fun. Terrific looking city and marky. Oh, well, that I, I see you've been walking in the park again, Uncle. Oh, Basically. this here. You had the bungee up there. He punched out a big one, didn't he? Hey? Remember, the issue is should there be an election blackout? I say no. If you think otherwise, ring in. Let's know what your opinion is. Of course, everyone knew who that was sending up. Darren, the human headline, host of his own real public affairs program, Hitch. I've lived a life that's full I traveled each and every highway And more, much more than this I did it my way. I said the night that I was sacked by the network I said the network does have the right to do what it did I just think it was wrong stupid actually another show dealing with topical issues without the laughs was day by day hosted by mark day a memorable moment was the surprising appearance of one of the world's best known outlaws don't you see anything immoral about having a a, a celebration of of your success in beating the law no i don't charming do you no if i were in his position i would be celebrating too i'll drop out now you can say your own farewells you can see how terrible I am. I've been working late recently and uh, as for a lot of late nights we've been making a video clip and I've been sort of starting at midnight and finishing at 6 and 7 in the morning so I'm looking slightly under the weather for that. You're not making a but, pop record uh, really, again, are you? Day by Day ran on a demanding schedule, five nights a week, but HSV's most prestigious program only goes to air one day every year. It's the Royal Children's Hospital Good Friday Appeal. Since it was first televised on 7 Melbourne from this studio in 1957, it's raised millions of dollars which contributed to vital research and the saving of inestimable children's lives. You, Brian, I've got to say, one of my very favourite ladies on television, and I haven't had the opportunity of meeting her before, please say hello to the lovely Kerry ann Kennel. Thank you very much. Oh, please do. So it. good to be working with you. And I want to tell you something, Bert. I love you. <laughs> okay, we have $30 from Demetrius Calogero Bonus. Oh, it just rolled right it. off the tongue there, didn't it? <laughs> from West Doncaster. Con, do you just want to verify that and give us the proper pronunciation? West Doncaster. <laughs> Friends at the Criterion Hotel Rochester, the founding members of the Herring Bulk Wine Club, have donated the grand total of 4,762 litres. <laughs> the, the Good Friday Appeal serves an even deeper, more subtle purpose. It unites us all like nothing else in our society. It's become our one true community tradition established through television. And we're very proud of our long, dedicated contribution. was just one of the incredible characters created for Shirl's Neighbourhood, which was recorded in this studio. Shirley Strawn surrounded himself with a collection of funny, clever and sometimes outrageous puppets. Before we take a break, I want to remind you that all the shows we're including tonight were made in Melbourne, right here in Studio One. We'll bring back memories of shows you may have forgotten and others you'd love to see again.